Hello and welcome to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Mario Scavello. Today I have the honor and privilege to be at one of the most famous of the resorts here in the Poconos, Pocono Manor, that's actually celebrating its 110th anniversary this year and the 100th anniversary of the golf course. And with me, my guests are Jim Cahill, who is the general partner, managing general partner, am I correct? Managing partner. Managing partner. Right. And Lisa Green, the manager of the resort, right? Yes. Which is the big job. It's a big job, Lisa, isn't it? For this beautiful Oh, no, piece of cake. Piece <laughs> of cake. <laughs> I, I have to tell you, every time I visit here, I just get that feeling that I'm back 100 years ago, mm -hmm. but everything is like brand beautifully, you know, decorated. Right. You, you know what I mean? It's right. almost like the day that it opened, if right. I can imagine, if you can imagine that. With, but now with air conditioning. With air conditioning. And hot water and That's all that right, all the amenities. <laughs> because 100 years ago, I'm sure that wasn't here. Yeah. Why don't we first, Jim, why don't we talk a little bit about the history of, of, of Pocono Manor, and uh, then we'll talk about uh, some other, you know, the, the future and everything else. Let's right. uh, Pocono Manor was um, started by a group of uh, Quakers from Philadelphia who came up here in 1901, mm -hmm. and they visited the property, and at that time it had uh, just suffered a forest fire, and there were no trees on the property. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so they stood here, and without any trees, you could plainly see Delaware Water Gap and right down through the Poconos and how beautiful it was. So um, they, uh, they decided to purchase a property and in 1902, the spring of 1902, they started building Pocono Manor. And they actually opened, if you can believe it, they started building in March and they opened in September of that year. They only opened for a short period of time, mm -hmm. and it was kind of like a, dr a uh, dry run. Uh, well, soft yeah, opening. Soft, soft opening, yeah. right. Um, <coughs> but um, they, uh, that year also, they subdivided um, the lots that you see around here, which comprise the village of Pocono Manor, mm -hmm. and they had a lottery, mm -hmm. and the, the original Quaker investors each got a lot, and they built their summer home here, which are the cottages that you see today. Uh, they were their summer homes. Some of them are 8,000 square foot summer homes. That's it was the day before income tax. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and uh, that's the village uh, that you see here. And the, the manor was the hub of the wheel, the town center, if you would, uh, where everybody got together. The, uh, original lobby was called the exchange because everybody would come in, read the newspaper, and where all the gossip. It was the town center. We mm -hmm. had barber shops in the building and soda fountains and post post office. The post office is still downstairs, mm -hmm. and and um, it was just. Uh, uh, I imagine it was a magnificent facility back then. It still is magnificent, but for in its time, it was state of the art back then mm -hmm. and beautiful. So. Um, it was so unique that years later <coughs> it was nominated and accepted. It's now a National Registered Historic District and the building is uh, on the National Registry of Historic Places just because it was such a unique concept and um, uh, the village concept at the time. So it's qualified and now we're a National Registered Historic Place also. That's a, it's, it's a great honor, it really is. And you know, you, we didn't even talk about the golf courses. You've got two 18-hole golf courses. In the, in the old days, you had the, the Open, right? The U.S. Open was here. Um, we ha no, we didn't have the U.S. Open. We had um, a PGA uh, Tour event, mm -hmm. um, and we had uh, some of the first ever televised golf events here. And they were, it was called the Wide World, it was called um, not Wide World of Golf. Uh, Inside Golf. All Star Golf. All Star Golf. All Star Golf, and it was filmed here in the '59 and '60 era, and it was so new. Televising golf, the way they did it was they had a '60 1960 Chevy station wagon, and the camera was mounted on the roof of the car. Oh my gosh! And, and that's the, where the cameraman stood. And the cameraman stood on the tailgate or on the right on the hood, uh -huh. and they drove the car down the fairways, and that's how they filmed the golfers playing and everything. It was uh, uh, a very unique thing, um, and uh, some of those still air on the Golf Channel at two mm -hmm. o'clock in the morning. If ever you have insomnia, yeah. turn on the Golf <laughs> Channel. And the golf you channel. should, uh, should uh -huh. be able to to catch them, and um, in the early 50s and 60s before 
the days of Nike and Spalding and uh, all the big dollar sponsorships they have today, whenever a pro tried to go on the professional tour, he tried to find local businesses. And Pocono Manor was such a prominent golf place then that a fellow, a young guy, right out of college, that wanted to go on the pro tour, came to Pocono Manor and convinced them to sponsor him on the pro tour. And his name was Art Wall Jr. And in 1959, he mm -hmm. won the Masters, wow. representing Pocono Master. He won four PGA events that year. He was the PGA Golfer of the Year. Wow. And, and um, his son, Greg Wall, is our golf pro here today. So we have wow. a lot of that's history. Wow. Yeah, a lot of golf history here yeah. too. Mm -hmm. So, Lisa, let's talk about the mm -hmm. the hotel. Okay. Inside the the, the amenities, um, and there's so many here. And yes. The, and the, the the different size rooms that you have that you can accommodate. We, we have. Let me start with the guest rooms. Mm -hmm. Two hundred and thirty-seven guest rooms. Uh, we do have three buildings with lodging rooms. Mm -hmm. However, the main building uh, housing them was 200 rooms. Mm -hmm. So this is where most of the, the, the center of activity is. And the rooms, um, we have the rooms in the tower, which was a new addition in 1927. Six. 26. Yes. That's right. the modern wing. <laughs> right. uh, and those rooms are some beautiful views. It was the highest building around at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And then the original main rooms are, are all very different. So to me, they're, they're, they're nice. They're new, unique. unique. They have the dormers, and uh, it's in keeping with the history of the hotel. So um, when we did the remodel this past year, we, we tried to keep the feeling. We didn't want to lose the historical and the charm yeah. of, of the building. So, and as far as my meeting and banquet space, I can do uh, banquets for six, 700 people. I have lots of classrooms and smaller meeting rooms. I uh, have about 40 weddings a year. So we've um, compared to five years ago when we had two or three. Yeah. So weddings uh, become quite popular here, destination weddings. So they have their recept or their their ceremony on the, our back patio. I've done a few myself. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> it starts with Friday night uh, rehearsal dinner and ends with brunch on Sunday. Yeah. So that's uh, that's always really nice to be a part of. Well, it's great. Is you're, you're right off the highway. Yeah. So we're it's right off the highway, but we're on top of a mountain. Yeah. Think about that. You know, you yeah. really off the highway. You don't hear the vehicles, but right. it's it's, it's easy to get here. Yes. Right? That, absolutely. And uh, do you have various size rooms that you can accommodate? Like you said, up to. 600, did you say? I can do six, 700 people. Mm -hmm. Wow, in the one, big one up in there. In the big, big dining room, yeah. And then downstairs, you, uh, what is the Marmaduke? Uh, Marmaduke Marmaduke's Marmaduke. is a casual uh, lounge, almost a cigar bar feeling yeah. with yeah. the nice overstuffed leather chairs, uh, which um, once you sit in those, it's You don't really, want to get up. Yeah, yeah. But a real, what a nice place to sit down or yes. have an event. That yes. It's, and and you've, I've had many, uh, the chamber, as a matter of fact, has had an event down there. Sure. And it. it mm -hmm everyone just uh, raves about it. Yeah, it's a nice setting. And then you have the theater next to it. Is the, the theater? theater next to it, which we use for meetings and conferences uh, for them to make presentations. And then on the weekends, uh, non-summer weekends, we use it for family movies, which is a big hit. And then uh, this time of year, we have uh, movies by the pool on a big blow-up screen, so it's not used as often unless we get rain, and we haven't seen too much of that. Yeah, I think we, uh, I'd like it at night. So I know. This way we can <laughs> keep 11 at night to 7 in the yeah, morning. Let's yeah, let's have it at night so people, we can enjoy the yeah. area here, because yeah. uh, the, and it actually the, the, uh, uh, the, the water parks have been doing very well because yes. it's been hot. They're coming up in yeah. New York and New Jersey. And the one, the, better, the, the, the proximity to New York and New Jersey is really what, what oh, attracts it's, people it's, to it really area. is. It's an easy drive from Manhattan. Once you get out of Manhattan, it's, yeah. it's a piece of cake. Uh, South Jersey's two and a half hours. North Jersey's a little less. So it's good proximity. One of the, uh, the, we talked about it briefly, but the views from the top of this hotel yes. from the, and from various locations on this property, mm -hmm. It's just amazing what you can uh, see. Bre breathtaking. Right? There, yeah. They are breathtaking. You can see Delaware Water Gap. You can see three states. And let me tell you, on 4th of July, it's quite a spectacle because yeah. you, you see fireworks you see all, all over around. the yeah. place. Yeah. Let's talk about the uh, the property itself and the, the improvements that have been made on the property. You, you, I could, you have new roofs. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of work that's been done here. We briefly, I know you renovated the rooms and you can see it here, but even on the outside, you've done so much. Uh, outside, the some concrete work has been done. It really... Um, we have a um, one of our maintenance staff is a uh, <coughs> proficient sta mm -hmm. stonemason. Mm -hmm. And uh, given that a lot of our exterior is the old stonework yeah. from mm -hmm. the era, uh, he's an important guy. And also this year we've added a gardener mm -hmm. uh, to the staff. 
and um, out around the pool now and everything just looks magnificent as you drive up all the flowers and the it's amazing yeah, yeah. It, it's it, the yeah. the stonework it's almost like matches it yeah it's, right it, 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 it's, well the thing is you could just start and, and keep going and never finish because then it's time to go back to the beginning again but yeah. it's um, uh, it's a beautiful building but being mm -hmm. 110 years old it's a uh, it's not a maintenance free building right. of course means, it's, so. yeah <coughs> so, yeah. but you need to keep after your property <coughs> um, and keep it nice and keep it refreshed and that's what we try to do. And for a while it didn't happen, but since you, you took over, I, you can see it in here. You walk in here, it's just unbelievable. Well, the company, the uh, they, they're committed to the property yeah. and they have big plans for the, for the land. Um, you know, it's, and here's a project that just baffles my mind. We are uh, upgrading our elevators, mm -hmm. which is strictly mechanical. It's not going to make them prettier. It's mm -hmm. strictly mechanical. And that's going to be like a $300,000 project, but absolutely necessary. So mm -hmm. they're, they're definitely committed mm -hmm. to making the property the best it can be. That's great. Across the street from here, mm -hmm. we have uh, one of the, was it one of the biggest or one of the most, uh, the sauna and the... Uh, uh, the Laurel Spa. The yeah. Laurel Spa. Talk yeah. about that. That is... It's, a, it's, you know, um, the only complaint uh, that I ever receive from a guest is they might say, oh, it's a little pricey. But I think a good spa needs to be pricey, and I think it's worth every penny. They do an amazing job, uh, a variety of services for ladies and men. Yeah. And I'm seeing more and more men taking advantage of it, and uh, it's, it's always, it's always uh, appreciated by the guests that, that have the opportunity to, to use it. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful facility. Yeah. Where, when yeah. it, it opened about five years ago, I believe, or so, was it? 2006, five or so. Five, six years. No, 95, was. 96. No, 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 it's in 2002, it's, I believe. 2002? Okay. Uh, 2003. Okay. It was right before we, uh, we Co came and uh, mm -hmm. purchased. purchased the property. Why time flies. Yes, it does. My gosh. Yes, but it it's does. absolutely a beautiful facility, and, uh, and it, it's, it's, it's like, a, it's really, a, really attraction. Yeah. And I tell you, I see people come in. Every time I come up here, there's somebody coming out. Yeah, they, they, so they're you're getting, steady. So you're yeah. getting the, the turns in there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, What's some, what are some of the plans? What do you, what do you plan to do uh, like next year as far as attractions? Anything booked? Uh, for the as future? far as our, like yeah. the, the, the nature of our business? Mm -hmm. Well, as I mentioned, we do lots of weddings, mm -hmm. uh, meetings and conferences all year long. Mm -hmm. our, our busiest uh, group months are June and September, mm -hmm. but we've really done a nice job of filling in the shoulder months. Uh, March or April over Passover, we'll mm -hmm. have 600 guests here take over the entire facility and we become completely kosher. Nice. Uh, so that's really a, a nice event for us, and it's, we work with a really great operator out of uh, North Jersey, so that's been a success. Um, it's always, uh, every year is different than the last. This spring we had the two Tough Mudders event, mm -hmm. events, and uh, wow, they were very neat, and to see those, that amount of people coming through the property, and um, it was very well run by the client, and uh, it's just neat to be a part of. How many people were here, 20,000 or so? Over the course of a weekend, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So. And you know, that's just 20,000 people that you brought here to the community that also spend money locally. Sure, they're they sleeping go back over. Exactly. They're eating. They're, they're buying gas yeah. here. Ev 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 Not just here at the resort. No. Anyone that you attract here, you know, any of the, you know, right. a lot of folks don't understand why you, you, anyone that comes to this facility at some point is off property. Impacting the area. And when they're in that area. So yeah. it's not just the jobs that you create here at Pocono Manor. Right. But you also help create jobs in the neighboring Absolutely. community. Sure, yeah. Good Mount Pocono, your Fairview Avenue, you mm -hmm. know, it's, yep. especially now with the bridge down, you're getting a tremendous amount of folks yeah. know, that come here that are stopping at some of those shops. Right, they're seeing some things they might not have seen. But you, yeah. you're trying to make it sound like the detour is a good thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. you it's know. It's progress, progress it's is a progress. good thing. It's progress, it's progress. But you, I, I, uh, I would tell you that there's some folks in, in, in um, Mount Pocono that would rather not have the detour because sure. because the tra but traffic but yeah but I think it's a good thing to see the vehicles coming the fact that they are coming here that you are that you are prospering and by doing that the 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 community is doing well as well absolutely you know? absolutely you've been watching legislative report we'll return in a moment. Did you know that Act 16 of 1999 honors one of the greatest leaders in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives? 
The Matthew J. Ryan Legislative Office Building, once known as the Capitol Annex, is located next to the main Capitol building and honors the late Speaker of the House, Matthew J. Ryan. Those who visit this building will observe the magnificent architectural designs providing eloquence and grandeur to the building. Known as one of the greatest members in the history of the Pennsylvania State House, Matthew Ryan started his career in the legislature in 1963 and was elected Speaker in 1981. His charisma and knowledge will forever be reflected in the building now named after this great legislative leader. Now you know. Did you know that the state capitol is not only the epicenter of the Commonwealth's governing bodies, but was once home to 390 preserved Civil War flags? During the war, it was customary for each state to furnish their regiments in battle with flags representing their contribution to the Union Army. After the war, Pennsylvania's military department was responsible for collecting the flags, and in 1872, they were reverently housed in the Capitol. Following the completion of construction on the new Capitol building in 1914, the Civil War flags were removed to the Capitol Rotunda. They were kept untouched in custom-made flag cases until 1982 when the Capitol Preservation Committee initiated its Save the Flags project. Throughout the years, dust and long-term vertical display of the flags had begun to devastate the brittle silk fabric and painted designs. The flags were removed by local textile conservators and were repaired and preserved in storage units that protect the relics from light, dust, and excessive handling. Now you know. Welcome back to Legislative Report. My guests are Lisa Green and Jim Cahill from Pocono Manor. Lisa, um, we talked about the facility, and but let's talk about some of the amenities that you have. Yeah, here. there's there's lots to do. You can spend probably five nights here, do something different every day, and never leave property. So we've talked about the spa. Um, I have the two 18-hole uh, courses, and they're both very unique courses, so mm -hmm. you can play one and have a completely different experience the next day on the other course. We have a sports club that this time of year, it's archery, fly fishing, clay shooting, uh, winter yeah, time. Biking. Oh, yeah, it's biking, you rent yeah. bikes. And then in the winter time, you can do um, cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, dog sledding, snowmobiling. So there's, there's an awful lot to do here, um, so it's a lot of fun. I think you know our, our, our guests need to come back once in the winter and once in the summer to, see to get all. a full taste. And actually, even the fall. Yeah, the fall. You, the fall's fall, beautiful. You, Absolutely my gosh, beautiful. yes. We have miles and miles of nature hikes out in the woods. Um, beautiful water fountain, uh -huh. which uh, is crystal clear. So it's, it's, it's a nice uh, adventure. The new uh, health and fitness center? The new health and fitness center, absolutely. That's a pretty big facility there, too. It it's about yeah. over 10,000 square, I think it's it is, right? pretty big. Pretty big, and right. then they have all kinds of classes, like spin classes and aerobics. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you can run a private racquetball court or tennis. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of options there, too. Golf, you have a driving range, a huge Absolute driving course. range, right. and uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I have a memorable event golfing here. I broke a leg golfing. Oh, here? Yeah. <laughs> really? When you don't go that often, you very really hit the ball in the fairway. So when you go in the woods looking for your ball, you better watch where you step. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and I still wanted to play. The guy says, no, no, you got to go. So I tell people, so how'd you break your leg? I was golfing, you know, because I don't, I, maybe I go out once a year, right, you know. Right. You saw me, that was my time. That, you know. that was it. Yeah. Well, it, maybe next time you come <laughs> come over, you can do like horseback riding. Yeah. We'll put you in a carriage ride. It's much safer. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a, a unique room here, aren't we? I, I look at all the books behind us, Jim. Yeah, this is uh, the library that we're in. Uh -huh. It was, uh, <clears throat> this was the end of the building that was originally built in 1902. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, the library. As I said, the, the lobby at that time was called the Exchange, where everybody came and, and conduct. Well, this was like the village library. Mm -hmm. And most of the books on the shelves behind us are uh, turn of the century vintage. Wow. So they've been here with the building a long time. A lot of them, uh, the bindings are worn off and things, but they're part of the, the history and heritage. So we, we try to keep it as, uh, you, you could as it was. Yeah, you could so. imagine over the years, the famous folks that must have been in, in your hotel here, right. uh, that, that have stayed here, that, you know, uh, in, in their time. Yeah. yeah, a lot of uh, visitors have come and gone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, and, uh, 
we have on the property a honeymoon trail mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of people got married here over mm -hmm. the years also. Mm -hmm. And there's a section of the woods on this honeymoon trail where just about every inch of every tree has honeymooners initials carved in it wow. in the year they were here. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, That's one thing with, with, with the age of the hotel, right. the memories that, that yeah. the folks yeah. that were here. And it's, you know, I'm seeing the next generation. Come back. My grandparents got married. I'm going to go walk that trail. So it's really neat that, you know, it's... it's yeah, that's, uh, that's unbelievable. Yeah. It really is. You know, one of my favorite little rooms, for the, right across the lobby on the other end, where uh, is, we've, we've had luncheons in that room. It's, the exchange? Is that the, the small dining room? Yeah, that's, yes. the, that's the exchange. We, we call that the exchange now uh, in honor of what the lobby was. Oh, okay. And that's our uh, a la carte restaurant. Yeah. And seats about 70. Now, I've, I've, I've seen events there w the, mm. that have been held in that room. And yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it's a nice little room. It's an, it's and there's nice uh, some unique artwork in that room as well. And uh, the furniture hadn't arrived. When they opened up for their first dinner, the furniture hadn't arrived. And it shows guests eating their meal on crates. So, uh, boy, I'll tell you, a trip advisor so. would go on oh fire if I fed my, <laughs> my, my guests on crates. But, yes. Try to do that today. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but it's a neat, neat picture. The, the, all of your ballrooms have been redone and absolutely look fabulous. You know, it, it's with that old, the charm, but yes. it's all but bright and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And to me, uh, you didn't take away from the character of the building and the renovation. Right. You know what I'm saying? You've, you we tried to enhance it. it. You enhanced it. Right. And it's absolutely uh, beautiful rooms. Yes. You have a room over here to, to my, I guess that would, pop, would have been the new addition with the glass from, uh, behind us here on, on this side. If the old hotel was here, ends here, yes, ends here, I would think that that was the um, the new addition, the right? The ballroom, and then my handicap that, rooms. That, that ball was the first but the edition. The room in between with the arch windows you're right. talking about, that was originally an open air balcony between mm. the two buildings. Okay, and the roof of that was an observation deck on oh. the second floor. Okay, and that was originally um, uh, open air. Covered porch. Wow. Uh, where, uh, you know, again, part of the exchange where okay. everybody sat and gossiped and yeah. drank did, their coffee. They did such a, from the outside, you can't tell, by the way, that no. there was an addition. You can't. They've done, yeah. Whoever, you know, the construction was, you can't tell that there was an addition. Over the years. Over yeah. the years, yeah. Yeah. really, because it, it just blends in so perfectly. Yeah. What other highlight would you think here in, at, at the manor that you'd like to tell the folks back home? Well, one thing I, I wanted to mention, you know, we, uh, we talked briefly about the, uh, the golf course and the uh, events that were here, but um, the East course is such a unique course uh, because it originally opened as nine holes and it was designed by Donald Ross, mm -hmm. one of the greatest golf course architects that, mm -hmm. uh, that ever lived. And uh, recently we found that the back nine was designed by William Flynn, also a great golf course architect in his time and we even found the original drawings that he did so <clears throat> that course is the only known collaboration where Ross did nine and Flynn did nine so it's a pretty unique course and um, we're pretty proud of that you it's, have leagues here on Monday night I guess is it Monday yes, we have a, a league that plays on uh, Mondays we also have a golf club and every year we have it since 1920 five when the second nine opened and it became mm -hmm. a nine hole course we've uh, we've had uh, club champions since then and their names are on the board out in the golf club house mm -hmm. that's yeah. another just beautiful keep room. adding to that's it, another right? beautiful room that was renovated on the other side uh, mm -hmm. with you you walk into it wow it, it's not far well, we, and we've added so much of the golf history now you can pretty much follow it on the walls so that's it's interesting you know yeah. you didn't you and, and wherever you renovated you did not Look back. You 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 look back and you kept the charm right. from the from the from the beginning to today. And right. It's it just a um, um, and on the other side is I guess the shooting club. There was a, a clay club. Manor uh, Sports. Right on right. the other side. Yes. Yes. That's Manor Sports. That's where most of our golf activity. Yeah. You can rent a bike there. You can go, uh, book fly fishing there mm -hmm. or fly fishing lessons. You yeah. can do. We do lovely mm -hmm. uh, steak fries and clam mm -hmm. bakes on the back patio. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a neat And story. I've noticed also some of the construction, new, brand new home construction, and not small houses. Some well, these little cottagers, you know, uh, some of them have 12 bedrooms. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. But, but the, even the new construction. They're not small. Huge, <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, we tried to keep it, though, there. 
their new modern houses. Mm -hmm. They have all the modern <coughs> conveniences, uh, but we tried to make them look architecturally on the outside, like mm -hmm. they fit in in an arts and crafts community, mm -hmm. uh, you know, turn of the century. So. Um, Inside, they're all new and modern. Mm -hmm. Outside, we tried to keep the charm of the mm -hmm. neighborhood. And you've got plans also um, on Fairview Avenue, I'm, I'm assuming, townhouses or something in the future? Or is that? Uh, we do. <coughs> um, we all know what happened to the yeah. residential yeah. real estate yeah. market. So those plans are kind of on the back burner. But we do, in our long-range plans, have... Um, so, and they're pretty close to the golf course too, right? Correct. So, yes. so you, you have uh, you know proximity there and all. And, uh, yes. and that, what other what other plans do you have for the facility? For the well, the we uh, we um, we're working on uh, some plans that are very big for the uh, the the big for our property mm -hmm. and for the Pocono region in mm -hmm. general. Mm -hmm. um, we're not ready to make an announcement yet or name any names, yeah, but yeah. this is something we've been working on for quite a while and. Uh, when the facility uh, opens, it's anticipated that it will produce about 800 new jobs right off the bat. And over the next seven years, as it builds out, um, it'll employ about 1,500 people. So that's a big, and, uh, big and, project. And, for but the also, Pocahontas. I believe there's something else that's coming after that. There's some more retail. Am I correct? With yes, we do have a uh, retail uh, planned out on the intersection of Route 80 and 380. Uh, 380 and 940. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, those plans are starting to materialize now, also. So, um, uh, so we do have some big new things planned on the property, but they're they're on the property, but they're actually a mile and a half mm -hmm. from the building we sit in mm -hmm. now. So mm -hmm. um, this resort will continue to uh, Pocono Manor will be continue and uh, it will prosper in its. Oh my gosh, yeah. tradition of the past with our new renovations, but mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have a little bit of old and a little bit of new on the property. Yeah. I think you said that 800 number. I think when, when it's totally built out with what you're planning on top of the other, I bet you you're going to be over 2,000 new jobs. Oh, uh, Easy. easily. Easily, easily right? Easily. New jobs here in the community. Melissa, you know, he jumped the gun. I wanted to find out how many we had first. <laughs> well, I have about 225. The number seems small yeah, now. But, but that, uh, hey, you yeah, know. No, in season, we, we have about 225 employees. Mm -hmm. And um, we just kind of added a few perks to our mm -hmm. benefits package, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, added some uh, paid holidays, added some more vacation time, That's some great. disability insurance. So we're, uh, we're committed to the property and we're committed to the team that makes mm -hmm. it happen. And we have some really good... I wish I wish you both the best, and I and I know that the that those pro that project is going to really prosper here in this community. It's going to help here at Pocono Manor and the community at large because, as you know, we do need jobs here. Uh, we've become a bedroom community. We have a tremendous amount of folks that are that are constantly traveling mm -hmm. either in their vehicle or there or on a bus to New the York and New Jersey. Ultimate commuters that go to and, New York. And yeah. if they, if we can do if we can create some jobs here to keep them here closer to their families it's such such much much better for, for everyone and, uh, and I thank you for the effort your efforts in, in making that happen oh we're glad to be, I'm okay. glad to be a part of it uh, and thanks for being a friend of Pocono yeah. Manor All my right. pleasure my pleasure All thanks, right. thank, thank you, you Mario. thank you you've been watching legislative report I'm state representative Mario Scavello if you have any questions or concerns of what you just heard please contact my local office the address and phone number will appear in a moment thank you and have a great day and see you next time legislative report.